Hello guys, welcome to TMX Adventures, Lisa here. Hey look, uh, we are continuing on today our Bring a Plate series. I hope you're enjoying these videos and you're taking bits of inspiration with them and tips for your Thermomix uh, to help you through this time of year. Today I'm going to show you how to make an amazing cob loaf. Now on the download you will find a cob loaf recipe of cookie dough. Okay, it is the cheese and bacon cob loaf. Now it's beautiful, it's amazing, but it's glutinous. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a gluten-free one. However, if you're looking for an easy one, like honestly, go grab that one. If you don't need the, like if you don't need it to be gluten-free and make it, it's easy. You'll find this at tmxingadventures.com.au under the blog. So go download your copy of this. Uh, by the way, a newsletter, well, a little info coming out tonight from me. So keep an eye on your inboxes for that. So today I'm going to show you which recipe I use, take you through a bit of the steps on it and uh, show you a photo of the final product, okay? Now I have my awesome Fear Aware that's actually just arrived. We've just had a sale in the mix shop and I got, some, I got the whole collection. I'm super excited. I've actually preheated this in the oven. Uh, I love the little silicon bits that come on the ends. So you can actually take these off and put them piece to piece and it's actually on a silicon trivet as well. Uh, you go buy them all separate but love it. Um, can't wait, I think I said yesterday, can't wait to do my lamb roast in there, my slow cooked lamb roast. Now I have used a recipe today uh, called the Artisan Gluten Free Loaf. Cookie do, really easy. If you need to take something to a uh, party, a friend's house that is gluten free, this recipe is the closest thing to white bread. So you will enjoy it and love it as much as they will appreciate the fact that you've put this thought into it. It does have almonds in it. Now I've actually swapped the almond meal today, well the almonds you mill into almond meal, uh, for seeds. So we make at breakfast time every day of the week for the last 10 years-ish, about that, um, some little veggie patch circles. And rather than having flour in them, we have a seed mix. Sometimes we do put nuts into that as well, but it's predominantly uh, sunflower seeds and pepitas. Uh, so I've used that today. So if it's got a bit of a speck to it, that's why. But it does say almonds. But if it had to be nut free, just swap it for some seeds. It'll work perfectly fine. Hello, Kelly. Lovely to have you on. And it's a good loaf that you've made it. That is fantastic. I love to hear that. So in this recipe, it starts with almonds. It then has some yeast. It has um, some, it says sparkling I think it's a sparkling water. I just use water. I never put <coughs> sparkling in. And use what you've got, okay? It's got salt, it's got, the only tricky ingredient if you are not gluten-free is xanthan gum. Uh, you can also use something called gar gum. I might, might have pronounced that wrong in there, uh, but it's a thickener. You can't swap anything else for it. I get asked this question all the time. If you are gluten-free cooking, it's not the same without it, okay? It will make, it runny, it's a, it's a binder, okay? That's ultimately what it does. So it's probably the only tricky ingredient if you're not accustomed to cooking gluten-free, that you'll be like, what is that? And you can these days, thankfully, buy it at Woolworths. Years ago when I first started doing gluten-free stuff, you couldn't buy it at Woolworths. You had to go to a health food shop, but these days we're pretty spoiled. So, did you see my little trick there to get the dough out? This works whether you've got glutinous dough or non-gluten, just turn your little dial on the bottom. While I remember, those of you watching along who have uh, challenges with your hands and your wrists, have you seen in the mix shop, there is now a handle you can buy to help you take the base off your bowl. How cool is that? I love that they thought of that because that's something that, yes, it, you know, your base loosens up over time, but there's nothing worse than trying to get your base apart and just not being able to get the strength to do so. So that's pretty cool. It sits on the bottom and you can just click it around and it just does it for you. Just gonna show you something. There's a little bit of extra dough around the blades. Now, gluten-free dough, if you're not familiar, is actually quite tacky, all right? So I'm gonna get that off the blades and then I'm gonna tell you how we actually handle it. So just up to speed 10 for a couple of seconds. <laughs> That little trick there can be done with any recipe. If you've made muffins and there's leftover mix, biscuits, cakes, breads, glutinous or not, that's a little tip to spin everything off the blades. Okay, see that? Look at that. Now I can get the stuff out. Otherwise, I was missing that portion. Now, this recipe on the download this month, um, it actually has a uh, bacon and cheese dip. Now, you can put any dip you like in this. Our favorites is actually the herb and garlic dip, but you can put the, the uh, sun-dried tomato one in there, the, the creamy sun-dried tomato, it's amazing. Honestly, whatever your favorite, 
cream cheese style dip is will work in this recipe. Okay, now that is actually as clean as it's going to get. Remember to use your dough pre-clean when you're doing dough. Now I've got this clump of gluten-free dough. Let's see if I can get this in the camera for you. Over here. Now I've got this on some baking paper today. Where do I put it? There we go. So it can go straight into this. I have preheated my fira. It went into the oven at 200 degrees. That's why the little silicon things are on the outside. This in the moment is going to plop inside of it once we've got it ready to go. Now the easiest way to work with gluten-free dough is actually with wet hands. At the moment, it's a bit messy looking. If I touch it now, it will most likely just tack up my hands. So we wet our hands, and this goes for any of our gluten-free cooking. And we can now bring it together. Look, see, non-wet patch, sticky finger, yeah? Nothing worse than having it all over your finger when you want it on the plate, or on, in this case, the baking paper. So I'm just gonna smooth out the bottom. I'm actually gonna roll this over. This is gonna go upside down. Now, being that this cast iron is oval shape, I actually, strangely, don't want an oval shape final cob loaf. I actually want a round one. So I'm just wetting it with water and pushing it together. Okay, the water on the top will also make a really nice crusty top. And can you see what I'm doing here? I'm just shaping it. I do apologize, there's a lot of things in the way today. Now, I do have this big crack in the front. I don't know if I can show you. You could continue to work and try and push that together or even like your normal doughs, you could try and turn this so that it's on the side or underneath, okay? The beauty of working with gluten-free is that it doesn't mind extra handling. The more you handle glutinous stuff, the harder it is to actually get it to do what you want. You have to rest it in between. Whereas gluten-free, there's no gluten to relax, so you're all okay. <clears throat> there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you wanted to put seeds on top of this, you could certainly do that. The fact that I'm doing a cob loaf, I'm going to be cutting off the top and scoping out the insides. So there's absolutely no reason to, oh, well, I can if I want, but I don't need to put sesame seeds on top. I don't have to go specially out and buy sesame seeds and that sort of stuff. But being that it's wet on top, now's your time. If you wanted to put sesame seeds on top, certainly your time right now to do so. So now all I do is I literally lift that into my Fira cookware. Just trying not to make sure you burn yourself. Now this needs to rest. Um, being that it's warm already, I'm gonna grab the lid, it's down there. I'm gonna put it on top. It has cooled a fair deal sitting here, okay? So it will just be residue heat now, and that's fine. Um, if you don't wanna do it like this, you could have also proven it. Proven it, is that a word? You could have just put it on the baking paper, put your mat over the top and left it for a little while like that to let it grow. Um, this is cooled you know, enough that it's actually going to uh, do that proving process for us. So that's pretty, gonna be pretty handy as well. Now, let me just answer a question that I'm sure you're wondering. Lisa, I don't have fear of what do I do? Just use an ordinary tray. You do not need one of these. This will make a, a crusty, crusty loaf okay it's going to give me a nice crust however when we're making a cob loaf it doesn't really matter because it needs a second cook anyway we carve out the center we then cut up the bit we've carved out and any of the insides we've pulled out we put them around it and it goes back in again to cook again so in this case today with this recipe i mean the fira is fantastic and i'm so excited to have it after all this time but um it doesn't have to be it, does, it can just be a tray. Use whatever you've got. So if you've got an oven tray, just pick up your baking paper, put it on the oven tray, put your thermomat over the top. I'm gonna to put the lid on as I said, but put your thermomat over the top. Let it rest for half an hour in a warm spot. That just lets that yeast rise and gets a nicer, puffier dough, and then get it in the oven. It's going to take 45 minutes to 50 minutes at a 200. Actually, you know what? This is the time I should bring up the recipe and check. Let's bring it up. Just check your cook time. They do some crazy stuff with like water in the oven to make it crusty. I've never done that. So make it simple. Just put it, after you've proven it, straight into a preheated oven, 160 degrees for 45 to 50 minutes. No need for water in a dish, okay? You don't need it. Even if you're making this into a loaf of bread, you don't need it, okay? 
And then what you do after that is let it cool um, as far as you can. Now, I'm running late today, it's 12.30, the kids are gonna want this for lunch, so I'm gonna cover it, I'm gonna give it 20 minutes, it'll get nice and puffy, I'll put it in the oven, it'll cook for the 50 minutes, I will get it out. I'll probably give it five minutes, I'll take this out so that it cools faster, and then I'll start carving it out. The longer you can leave it to cool, uh, the easier the carving is gonna be, where you cut off the top and scoop out the insides, slice it up. If you do this early, whether this is glutinous or non-glutinous, you'll notice your fluffy bread inside when you go to cut it out, cakes together, yeah? So this is something you can make in advance, which is why it's on the list. You can actually make these into mini ones. So last, no, year before, I actually, so Christmas a couple of years ago, I actually did this and I made it into minis. And then I put different dips in each one. Okay, and that works beautifully as well. This recipe here, as much as I've used gluten-free today, if you're glutinous, just use your pizza dough if you don't feel like following a recipe, all right? Or if you've got a favorite recipe, follow your favorite white bread or even wholemeal style bread recipe that you use. It can be as big as this, and it's gonna take that 45 to 50 minutes or even closer to an hour if it's a white bread. If you're doing little mini ones, they're gonna take more like half an hour. But then, when you're ready to cut them, as I said, you can make these in advance, you can seal them. Just seal them up, put them in the freezer. Get them out, carve them out, slice them up, put them in, do the second cook to crisp everything up. It only takes about 10 minutes on 180 degrees, maybe 200 if your oven's a bit slow. That will give you all your little dippers and a crusty shell. And then you put your favorite dip in it and you take it. It's as simple as that. How cool is that? Now it is a hard one to present nicely in a photograph. So please excuse my photograph later today. I can promise you that it probably looks like bread scattered on top of a bread or something. Like, I don't know how you present nicely a cob loaf. Really, how do you do that? So I will pro I'll send a I'll share a photo, but I can't promise it'll be a pretty photo because I can't imagine how you do that in a nice way. But if you've not tried a cob loaf and you are still buying bread, it's time to give this a go in your Thermomix. If you're still lacking confidence when it comes to bread, or maybe you've had some, th some fails, or maybe you just want to get more out of your Thermomix, Remember, I've got a bread course, okay? Now, it doesn't teach, it, it, got, it does briefly teach you how to put things in your Thermomix, but that's not the focus. The focus is what to do with that when it comes out. It is glutinous, okay? Not for gluten-free. It's completely gluten-filled, um, but it teaches you the techniques and how to make sure it's foolproof. We do croissants, we do choux pastry, we do all sorts of different things, pretzels and bagels and all these different things. So it's about the techniques okay it's not about the, this part i show you this part but that's not where the focus is all right so if you're interested in getting more out of your thermomix getting skilled up making sure it uh, does more for you in your kitchen and serves you more check out the courses over at my website but otherwise i'm going to put the lid on this before it loses too much temperature i'm going to get it proven in the oven and cooked if you do have questions about making a cob loaf because maybe you've never done it before let me know I'll try and take progress shots as I do this for you guys, uh, a little collage so that you can see the different steps. I think, I think it's pretty easy, but if you've never done it, it might seem a bit tra challenging. So I will take those photos for those of you who have never made a cob loaf and are about to embark on it the first time, which makes me so happy if you're gonna try something you've never done before. Hello, Linda, lovely to have you on today. Thanks for those of you saying hello today. Uh, I look forward to bringing you another video tomorrow. Remember, $29 bowl is ending two days time, the 30th of no, no, what are we? November. So it's Thursday, this, the deal is done. If you've been thinking about getting a TN6 on the bench, or maybe you've got a loved one or a family member, friend uh, that is thinking about it, now's the time, okay? Get, um, reach out and let me know. I'd love to honor you in that process. And there's something I certainly can do for you as well. But you know, this deal is gonna be gone in a couple of days and there's nothing better than having two bowls because you can have your bread one in one and you can have your dip in the other one, those sorts of things, so easy. Anyway guys, have a great day, take care, let me know if I can help you with anything regarding your Thermomix and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.